Good afternoon. Welcome to Caribou Weather Dude YouTube channel. I'm Joey. Only the Caribou Weather Dude up here in Wells, BC, 3,953 feet above sea level with all your British Columbia interior specifically weather news. But we do talk Western Canada, which includes coastal British Columbia and includes Alberta and Saskatchewan and uh, sometimes even Manitoba, who's uh, looking at seeing the weather warm up as this uh, stuff we've been having goes out their way. Now, I told you thunderstorms were coming. They're coming. It's going to be the case. Now, uh, do I have exact locations? Yeah, in some cases. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, uh, certainly right now we got storms that are just uh, in danger of firing up because of the heat. The heat alone, a little bit of instability for a trigger up there. And we have that uh, possibility that as the next bunch of days get going on, we are going to see an increase every day in thunderstorm activity. Let's get on with all the news and details. Hit like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, become a channel member, support me any way you can. I appreciate it, man. Okay, let's go. There it is. This is bad news. My God. Okay, let's paint the whole picture here. So uh, air quality statement still on the island. Heat warning still in effect for a little while longer with moderate risk to public health. Uh, to the end of the week now, it's saying for Fraser Canyon, South Thompson as well, up Bella Coola there, it's saying still now through Thursday for them. So uh, we might see that drop or maybe get extended tomorrow. I'm not going to guess yet on that. Heat warnings into Alberta ranging up to 33, maybe slightly warmer. We had Lytton hit over 40 Celsius for the third time in a row yesterday. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Heat warnings now all through the Northwest Territories getting up to 30. Things will cool down for them starting Sunday. They're saying, wow, 30 Celsius up far north and this time of year. It's crazy. It's really crazy. Air quality statement in Ontario. No, frost advisor. There you go. Frost advisory. So while it's super, super hot here, frost advisory there, 50 to 70 millimeters near the Ottawa Valley is going on through Friday midday. The Laurentians there, I should say. Air quality warning still on the Nova Scotia Peninsula. When there's this much heat, it's just a matter of time till the thunderstorms come. We'll talk about the thunderstorms in a minute here. 31-4 Beaver Lodge yesterday broke through its record. Cold Lake there just nudged above its old one edge. Edmonton tied its 30.4 record. That was set in 1981. 32.2 Edmonton area. Uh, reading yesterday, Grand Prairie up to 31.9. Slightly nudge in there. Lac La Biche uh, over uh, just about a degree warmer than its old record at 30.1 now. And Stony Plains set a new record yesterday. Daily records. Uh, we'll continue to British Columbia. 33.5 in Blue River area. 31.5 in Burns Lake. Crash Creek there. Seeing almost 40 C, 39.7 that is. You can round that up to 40. So if you said, uh, if you're in Crash Creek, Ashcroft, and said it was 40 Celsius here yesterday, I would accept that. I would accept that. Chetwind area, 32. Uh, reasonably smashing through their old record. Big time breakthrough in Clearwater at 36.7. I was skeptical on my thermometer saying 34 yesterday for as long as it did. I checked multiple thermometers. And I was having some ranging uh, results. Seeing that clear water got an official 36.7 makes me think that uh, uh, maybe, maybe indeed, we were as warm in my system, my station. I tried some things. I, I fooled around with it to see, like, is there getting a false reading? Like, what could be giving a false reading? So I tried a couple things, changed some things around just to make sure. And uh, it actually went up after I did things that I thought should... Um, you know, is there radiative, radiative heat coming off of things around the weather station? That was things like that I was looking at, right? <clears throat> and uh, just, you know, will I get a different reading if I, you know, move things around a little bit? And actually, I got a higher reading as the day went on. What you would expect, it was early in the day, early in the afternoon still. Fort Nelson up to 31 Celsius in Fort Nelson, even Dawson Creek, 31. Uh, Clinton got to 33.2. Fort St. John, 29.8. Gibson's new record is 29.6 there. Kamloops, 37.3, just nudging its old record that was set back in the dirty 30s uh, when things were hot. Uh, very, very hot decade uh, all in all. Kelowna, 36.9, destroyed its old record. Lillouette got to 40.4. Oh, my God, Lillouette. Uh, so now we had another location other than Lytton this year that hit 40 Celsius. So Lytton, only four times in Canada now this year, has someone hit 40. Lytton's done it all four times, 
And the last three times have been in the month of August, late August, in which we were showing you yesterday how before this there was uh, uh, just three times that Lytton had had 40 Celsius after August 15th. So we now have doubled the amount of times that Lytton has seen 40 Celsius just in this week alone. It's unbelievable, my friends, unbelievable. Merritt getting up to 36.5. People told me it was smoking hot there. I guess so. I guess so. It makes Mackenzie's 28.9 look kind of enjoyable. Uh, Nanaimo, 31.2. Nelson getting to 35.2. Pemberton getting to 35.6. Princeton, 37.1. Oh, wow. Just smashing old records. Like This is just blowing past old records and doing so consecutive days. This is an unbelievable heat spell, my friends. And you know the thunderstorms are going to be epic when they finally fire. 34-3 in Ponce, destroying its old record. Destroying it! Qualicum there, nudging above there. Quinnell area, seeing 34 at the airport. Uh, Seashell, 29-6. I'm still skeptical of my 34 here in Wells. Uh, but I did have, you know, thermometers. Every thermometer at different times gave me a reading that I thought was reasonable. So, like, it may have been for a short while here in Wells actually 34, even if I'm skeptical on it. Seashell 29.6. I don't even trust my own instruments. It's uh, Sometimes you have to be like that, though. 33.1 in Sparwood, destroying its old record. Destroying it in Summerlin. 36 there. Tatlioko, destroying its old record that was set in 1933, the Dirty 30s. Ver in 37.2 its old record was 32.8 destruction of the record destruction in williams lake destruction of the record unbelievable northwest territories as well uh anyone in northwest territories hit 30 yeah fort simpson did 30.7 so did nahani butte destroying its old record norman wells 31 destroyed its old record but that's just summer joey destroying daily records multiple days in a row at the end of august i mean this is the end of August, man. In some cases, we were close to breaking the all-time August temperature record in Canada by just a couple percentage, but just a couple decimal points in Lytton again yesterday. Two days in a row where it reached 41.3, which is astounding to me. Okay, yeah, it's hot, folks. And I didn't say anything about climate change. I didn't say it's the the sky is falling. You know, I enjoy this weather. It's nice. I've had years where it's literally had fresh snow on the mountains. I went out and did a little firewood this morning. I had to do it early because it's too hot to do it now. It's enjoyable. We're hiding inside. Go for a nice walk today. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy the weather. Well, here comes the thunderstorms. Ah, oh, yeah, the freaking thunderstorms. Uh, so there is that risk today up on the coast mountains. At least that's what uh, Environment Canada is saying. I have a little bit of disagreement i guess because of what models are saying but uh let's see let's find out who's right these are popcorn storms they're going to be hard to uh really nail down you know these heat induced thunderstorms they're not like being triggered by a cold front just moving through and be like okay well we're just waiting on the timing of the cold front and then the location will be where the cold front moves through now when it comes to these popcorn thunderstorms these pulse storms uh they kind of form where they form you know and it's like until some do you don't know for sure the exact location it's going to be on these pulse storms so pulse storms today and we're just going to keep it simple right now you could see some of those pulse storms today in uh locations that are beyond what they have uh listed here so they have like your best chance for it being in the coast mountains today i'm going to tell you that uh the risk of fire is is high right now it's really high and I'll, I'll tell you why i mean you are looking at a, a a situation here where things are dry the humidity is low the heat is up there and uh, any amount of lightning that starts taking off is going to be problematic now here's why i don't necessarily agree with them because the models keep showing this up there keep showing that areas uh, south of francois lake out to the chaco reservoir areas west of quinell all areas that could see some flashers show up this afternoon that is possible could see some flashers on the vancouver island these are popcorn storms so it's hard to know hard to know for sure but these are uh, that risk is there southeastern BC in the uh, Kootenays at least uh, you have that risk for thunderstorm activity today and these are not rain heavy storms no these are very dry there's not a lot of moisture to work with think back to July when we had our big thunderstorm outbreak starting to show up 
and it wasn't always clear where it was going to be. We have high Cape values uh, in the Caribou today, high Cape values up that central coast, high Cape values in Vancouver Island. You know, does that mean we could see thunderstorms that we aren't expecting pop up in those regions? Yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely possible. Uh, I'm really concerned about the uh, risk of dry lightning right now. As you head straight west to Williams Lake, uh, you get to the Bella Coola area. I'm concerned about the next bunch of days for lightning in uh, Vancouver Island. Um, you know, one of these days it's coming to you. It could be Saturday for sure. Each day things are going to ramp up more and more and more and more. And if we just uh, pop back a little bit and look at five in the afternoon, I mean, check this out. We are in very dry, dry air today. Humidex values around 16%. That is the kind of thing that fire just lives for. Low humidity on the island even, right? So uh, in some cases... Lower there, lower, lower, in some cases down to 30. So crossover on the island, maybe not, maybe not, but uh, definitely crossover conditions throughout most of British Columbia where the humidex value is lower than the temperature, which means that uh, fire will aggressively burn in those conditions. The same thing goes for... Uh, Thursday, largely, that temperature's still here. It's still going to stay hot. We're still into it. We still have uh, some Cape values that are uh, spiking up early in the day towards Vancouver Island, towards the Caribou. Could we see some thunderstorms out there? Absolutely, absolutely. Dry thunderstorms, not much rain, not rain intensive, and that makes them even harder to predict, right? Because you don't have the moisture to work with. You don't have this, like, clear, clear... Uh, ingredients there, but you know, the heat does suck the moisture to everything. It does tend to make the air humid. It is possible for these storms to find sources of moisture to drink from even in this dry weather. So, um, but again, that makes them, you know, thinking back to July when we started having these pop-up thunderstorms that were dry thunderstorms going on, they were very, very hard to specifically predict these random ones. Uh, I think some of the ones that are coming up later this week will be easier to predict, uh, to predict, right? Thursday, we're seeing some risk of lightning in southern British Columbia. These could be fire starters, my friends. This is a good-looking line all the way across from the Coast Mountains, moving right towards the Arrow Lakes, basically, and towards Kootenai Lake, uh, areas south of Revelstoke, looking at some of the lightning potential. Vancouver Island, seeing some lightning potential. Yep. Uh, up the uh, Coast Mountains, seeing some lightning potential. Yep. Saskatchewan, Larange, Cold Lake now starting to see some larger storms firing up, of course, but nothing uh, nothing crazy yet. We're just getting into it, my friends, just getting into it in Western Canada. You can see the temperatures now coming up pretty good. Saskatchewan getting hotter, uh, and the, heat weather, the hot weather's coming towards you, Winnipeg. It's coming towards you. Let's head to Friday, 11 a.m. Friday. Again, thunderstorms popping up. In now both BC and Saskatchewan, southern BC looking more at risk for a high uh, percentage chance of some thunderstorms popping off that day. These are fire starters. These are fire starters, and we got a dry spell ahead of us. I think Caribou has finally put a fire ban out, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I could check that for you, but uh, you should know before you go and make a fire. Uh, what the uh, rules are in your region. It's not my job to tell you what the uh, rules are because I'm here telling you what the weather is. So uh, up the coast mountains into that south end of the Chilcotin, uh, all areas, Kelowna, south and east of, south of Revelstoke, areas looking at some strong thunderstorm potential uh, in Saskatchewan, and some errant storms possible in Manitoba as well as that heat begins to move towards you. So here's what we're watching. Here's what we're watching, trying to see what's going to happen. But again, we don't have very uh, clear data in a lot of cases, but this is looking better. Thursday, Friday is better than Thursday, it seems like, for more spread. And that's where we're going to come into Saturday where things are going to get more interesting on Saturday Early in the day, we're seeing that risk of thunderstorm near Vancouver Island. Could see some stuff towards. I don't. I don't know if all these locations are exactly where things are going to go off. Right. Um, I think like these are good general uh, views right now. I think as we get towards the weekend, we'll have a better idea where storms are going to form than we have today on our, the ones that we have going on today. I think these are more. There's more trigger available 
there's more trigger to help make these storms, which makes it more predictable. It makes them more predictable. But yeah, we're looking at uh, a chance of really good thunderstorm set up for Van- uh, Vancouver Island on the weekend. Does Vancouver see some of that lightning? Yeah, maybe. Caribou, are you going to see some of that lightning this weekend? Yeah, most likely. Most likely into the Rockies, a little bit of flash in here and there. Yeah, sure. And head over to Sunday. Again, still Vancouver Island. Um a focal point early on. Now we're seeing by noon again widespread thunderstorms. The Rockies starting to light up. South Caribou starting to light up. Coast Mountains lighting up. Okanagan lighting up. Saskatchewan big time lighting up. Big time area thunderstorms. I don't know about severity for uh, uh, the prairies yet. We will get to that as we get in closer. Um, this doesn't look to me like a big time tornado setup like we had last time so far big thunderstorm setup it might be even epic amount of lightning but i'm not seeing that this big province-wide blob of lightning generally is not um on the outside what i expect on a tornado day i'd like to see a low i'd like to see a cold front i'd like to see certain things nonetheless uh that heat is uh making for explosive thunderstorms you know we're going to be up and down the coast mountains into the into uh vancouver Island a little bit into the chilcote in a little bit definitely the rocky mountains going to be taking a lot southern bc going to be taking a lot of lightning this weekend there's a lot of lightning strikes ahead in our future my friends uh, and there's going to be more fire stories there's going to be more fire stories and we are still a ways out on finding a decline in the temperature when are we going to see temperature change uh still not next week monday very very hot um tuesday looks pretty hot next week looking still very warm on wednesday next week still looking pretty warm maybe not as hot by the time we get to this time next week but still these are these are warm temperatures we are into a a warm spell i think to start september it's not going away Mm, you know models are showing look at this um you know, still slightly above seasonal a week in, still slightly, we, I don't know, we could be in for a, a period of warmth to start the meteorological fall. I hope that answered lots of questions. Hit like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, become a channel member. There's uh, things for your Patreons. And for, if you're on my Patreon or if you're a member of this channel, uh, for example, a full one hour live uh, show of me singing music is up there right now. And you get that if you join the channel. That and other videos that uh, you are not uh, they're not available for the public. Uh, ones that I either was like, you know, I can't show that. But hey, uh, my supporters can see it. Why not? Okay, well, that's uh, everything for me today. We will talk at you as soon as we know more. But that's your big overview on what's coming thunderstorm-wise for the next little while. So be ready, be prepared, have your go bags packed. Because if we have lightning starting new fires and you see the heat that we have still coming in the the week or two ahead, it's possible that some of these fires could be uh, challenging fires, stories, uh, fires of note or concern. Okay, we'll talk to you soon, friends. Bye now.